live from the Washington, D.C. area, all empowered citizens need to know about intelligent use of resources, smart governance, inclusive communities, smart industry, and healthy, thriving urbanization. This is Smart Sustainability, the TV talk about shaping a sustainable future in the digital age with Nicolette Stividar. There is so much nature can teach us. In nature, nothing is created in vain. There's no trash, there's no waste. Everything has a purpose, meaning, interconnection, a joy in whatever flows and comes naturally. The rose blooms because it blooms. Just think of a sunrise and the awe it can bring out, leaving us often speechless. You can't explain exactly what it is that brings it out, it's just there touching you, or a stunning moon you've just seen. There's an unexplicable reverence, a feeling of being whole in that very moment. Nature has something that reaches us in the heart. Why is that? How are we connected? Can nature even help us find the deeper meaning to our lives, the who we are? Our topic tonight, good evening, thanks for being with us. I'm Nicolette Stividar. You don't have to be a nature admirer to witness a moment that touches you deeply. Even if you feel totally disconnected with nature, at some point, something that you see brings out that awe. Children do it all the time. They look at nature and see nothing but miracles. The miracle of life, the pure joy of being. No need to add an attribute or an explanation. It just is. When we're out in nature and listen to the stillness, it somehow throws us back to ourselves. It's like having a dialogue with yourself and feeling yourself without ever having to talk. In that moment, we just are. Have you ever asked yourself why that's the case? When you go out in nature and somebody would ask you, who are you? I bet your answer would be completely different than what you'd say in an office. Of course you'd say it's different because they're different environments and hence you feel you have to tailor your answer. But is that really true? Or is it just because we've lost the connection to ourselves in that moment when we need to feel or when we feel we need to tailor our response? When was the last time you asked yourself, who am I? And were comfortable with answering just with, I am. Without the need of clarifying through roles, titles, possession, or attributes, just like in nature, in that moment of awe. When you can say, I am, and don't feel the need of having to add something to it, that's the moment we're deeply connected with ourself. So the question comes up then, how often are we connected with ourselves or with nature? To what degree have we lost this connection so we only feel it in that moment of awe? When was the last time, for example, you wondered why a certain flower exists or what quality this flower may have, how it relates to you? Actually, when was the last time we heard stories about this? Way back, stories were told as an allegory in how the universe works. They inspired people's imagination and sent them often on a quest to search for a deeper meaning as to why something exists. Now, as humanity progressed, we lost these stories and with it, the deeper meaning. Now, indigenous people have always told those stories. We in the Western world stopped listening and put ourselves more and more outside of nature. A reality that haunts modern societies because we lack, because of that, whole systems or a holistic point of view that we would need to understand nature and the human within. So tonight, we want to bring you some of those stories and listen to the deeper meaning of how things are connected. My guest tonight, here with me in the studio, is Michael Nephew. He's a citizen of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. He's also of Seneca and Cayuga descent. He's been involved with the American Indian Intertribal Cultural Organization, the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, and the American Indian Society of Washington, D.C. 
Joining us on Zoom is Gerald Auger, he's spiritual leader of Woodland Cree descent. He's also an actor and joining us from Canada tonight. Thank you so much, both of you. I'm so honored that you're on. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. See ya, and thank you for having us. Great. So let's start right with it. We talk about the connection of Earth. I want to start with you, Michael. When you think of Earth, what do you feel? I feel connected to it, you know, because you know, it, I always refer to it as Mother Earth. And, mm -hmm. you know, our, among the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee people, the, the Seneca and Cuga side of my, my descent, <clears throat> we have a Thanksgiving address and we give thanks to all of the, the first thing we give thanks to is, is each other and, and, and Mother Earth and then all the plants and animals and mm -hmm. the sun, the, the moon and the stars and the waters. Why do you do this? To give reverence to them and, and mm -hmm. to recognize what they provide for us. Like we have the, what we call the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, and it's because they sustain us. Mm -hmm. So there is this understanding automatically that there is a sustainability and it's a whole circle, right? So yes. it's a whole, that's, that's what this, this <clears throat> inborn reverence is. Yes. Hmm. Gerald, when you have this beautiful picture, and I hope we can actually put it up on the back, because I know you sent us this beautiful, beautiful picture of you when you're out there looking over nature. Describe to us, when I saw this, this image of you at first, I was thinking, I wonder what he was thinking. Describe to us how you felt in that very moment. So I thank the Creator first and foremost for allowing me to be here today. And without Creator, I would we would cease to exist as humanity. And I always need to honor the four directional part of myself as a human being. That's why I spoke in my woodland Cree language. That photo that you talk about is where I go when I'm sitting on the back of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. Is I'm thankful for being loaned yet another day in this physical world. We as a human species have forgotten the little things in life. Whereas we sit here today, we have fellow human beings who are taking their very last breath as they begin their spirit journey. Mm -hmm. And they are saying to themselves, I should have, I could have. Mm -hmm. We have forgotten how sacred life really is. So when I wake every day, just stay when I go to bed every night, I thank the creator for loading me yet another day. Because there are children being born without parents, children being born without vision, without having the ability to hear or being born without limbs. So where I go when I sit on the back of mother and listen to the silence is where every, every, time, every minute, every second becomes an eternity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm honored and I thank you, Nicolette, for allowing me to share with you what that my four directional ancestors and elders I've shared with you on the true value, the true sacredness and sanctity of life that we have forgotten. So. I think you're bringing up a really important point and it's the sacredness of life. Now, when you look at a child, for example, when a child looks out at nature and they see something, there is this automatic joy this 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 uh, i guess in english you pronounce it as reverence so 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 this 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 inborn understanding that there is something sacred about that so we we have this big awe there's this miracle we look at these things and mm -hmm. then now western society as we get older we kind of forget that but when you look at indigenous cultures that's not the case so what 
are you doing that makes this a part that's always in you and it's not something that you lose over time or that's kind of, I want to use the word educated out of you, so mm -hmm. to speak. What is it, what are indigenous people, what's in your background, for example, what are you doing differently that you held on to this all the time? I think that it's like a lot of what he said, you know, we give reverence for each day. We, you know, we, we don't take each day for, for granted. Mm -hmm. you know, when we wake up, we, we know that it's another day that's been given to us to work with and do something with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's the more being in the moment. Now let me ask you, when we talk about nature and we see nature, I, I think all of us describe this a little bit, when you're in nature, you are lonely, mm -hmm. yet you're never really alone, but you feel kind of one. So is it that when we're more connected with nature, then are we more mm -hmm. connected and living in the present? Is that mm -hmm. maybe what keeps mm -hmm. you more focusing on the idea that every mm -hmm. day is a gift and you feel mm -hmm. that you live it more fully? Mm -hmm. For me, as we were raised to stay connected to Mother Earth, to mm -hmm. all of creation. In my language, we call it askyuk snomak soon. When we are raised with these land-based teachings to understand that the air that we breathe is the wind that runs on the back of Mother Earth. The mm -hmm. water that covers 71% of Mother Earth is a 61% of that we are made of water, mm -hmm. the DNA of that tree is the same DNA in our bones. And the spark that we have in our heart that gives us life every day is the same spark that comes from Father Son. So for us, we are taught the true value that when we say all my relations, we are talking about the sky nation, the water nation, the insect nation, the animal nation, all those and the elements. That's how we are taught be, since before, prior to European contact. That's how we were taught. Our, our form of education was through these land-based teachings and understanding how we are truly connected to the air that we breathe, to Grandfather Rock, to all of those elements and all of Creator's creation. I actually think you mentioned a really important point. When you say the form of education was that you, you were educated with the land, I think in the Western society that's exactly what we have lost because when we educate our children, for the most part, and I think probably when you're at home you may agree with me or you may not, but I, I think when you really look at our education approach, we the way the Western civilization has educated their children is mainly that they are being told something from the external without any connection in what it actually does. Mm -hmm. So there is not necessarily something that you actually learn from nature and you see how nature works, how biology works, how the universe works, because we get all these theories of what scientifically has been kind of determined. And so kids learn that by heart, but they do not see it or experience it right out there. Though I do know that there's, I think, a big push actually for reversing this again. I do know there's a lot of schools now and also some teachers that teach, that take the kids and go back out in nature to teach them about how this all works. But this is kind of backward, but when you think about, so when you take nature out of it and you have no way of connecting with that, is it then really so surprising that we got disconnected? Not really, right? No. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard that there are actually some schools that are actually teaching the kids how, you know, to, to they have little gardens at their schools. Yes, so they do. It, it does, mm -hmm. yes. they are mm -hmm. bringing that back into the, into the teaching so that those kids totally have a better understanding of the whole process cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the time we're in right now, there is, I think there's, there's no one on the planet probably, who would say we're not in a time of change. I think at this point, probably everyone mm -hmm. must have realized that we 
there, there is a lot of change going on on every level. How do you see that based on the stories you've heard, based on what your ancestors have told about that time, based on what you're seeing? How would you describe what's going on? Michael, I'm going to start with you on this one. Well, w one of the things that, that I've heard is that, you know, up in, in the uh, Arctic area, mm -hmm. some of the Inuits were saying that the world had shifted. <clears throat> and the, you know, all the scientists were telling them, no, it hasn't. But then they realized that because of the, the air and the, the way the sun prisms through the air, mm -hmm. instead of rising over here, it was now rising over here. So their, their world had shifted. It was physically, it's no longer there. It's over here now. So it's in a physical sense they noticed that yeah. it has shifted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, they were like, well, no, it hasn't shifted. You know, you, you, but then when they looked at what, with their point of view, mm -hmm. they saw that it, that it really had for them shifted. And that's, I think, true with a lot of the other things is that a lot of the native communities are the first ones to see changes in the environment because they're more mm -hmm. in tune with the environment. Yeah. They know that the water goes up to here. Well, now the water's coming up to here. So they see those types of changes or that it's drier longer. Or mm -hmm. So you know. they see it firsthand, which is something, of course, when you disconnect it and you have no sense of nature and you look at nature like it's a machine, you couldn't recognize. Right. And actually, farmers have a lot of the same thing, too. Yeah. Because they, they they're, work, they're out there. They work they're out there that. working That's with the right. land. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Gerald, what do you see happening right mm -hmm. now? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two things that are happening right now that the ancestors spoke of. First, they talked about these natural disasters that are running rampant through Mother Earth. As they said, I had asked one of my elders, what's, what, what's really going on with that? Mm -hmm. And my elders said, well, what happens when the children lose, when the children don't pay attention and don't honor the parents. Mm -hmm. The parents will then step in to maintain order back from the children. So Mother Earth being our mother, a father son being our father, and Nutugu Tipskaw Pism that we know as grandmother night son, are telling us as the children, as a human species, if you will take the very trees that give you air, that give you air to breathe through deforestation. If you dirty the water that gives you life every day, including the air that you breathe, we will show you who is in charge. We are your parents, and if you can't honor us for the life that we give you, that they had said, we will show you. That's why they, when Mother Nature is puts her foot down, which is what she's doing. That's a part of it, right? And the other part being there is a global shift in consciousness happening right now. Mm -hmm. Because we as a human species have forgotten about the creator, have forgotten about the ancestors and spirit world. So the creator has sent, has sent everybody home to their home fires to sit and listen to the silence and realize that if you don't change your way of thinking and your way of life, there is nothing that you're going to be able to leave to leave behind for your children and their children's children. Creator's laws exist for a reason. Natural law exists for a reason. The laws of nature exist for a reason. Spiritual law exists for a reason. So this is a part of two things that are happening is Nagawieski, Mother Earth, Anuktawia, peace and father son, Anuktawia, peace and grandmother night son. Mm -hmm. are putting their foot down and saying said, so be careful be mindful because if you don't turn things around there will come a point of no return so. yeah i would agree michael you have something to add no i, I totally agree agree with him that yeah when the climate change totally affects the, the world and they say the world will end. It, the world will not end. Our life on the world will end, but the world will continue to go on and, and regenerate itself.
because it's a living organism. And as Gerald just mentioned, right, there is there are universal laws that are in every living organism. It is our misunderstanding <coughs> or misinterpretation, and actually probably sheer ignorance in most cases, mm -hmm. to neglecting those laws and, and understanding how everything is connected. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the ecosystems, for example, what are we doing? And I mean, collectively, uh, as a society, as, a, as an economy, what are we doing to the ecosystems? We just, mm -hmm. we, we, we're going through like bulldozers. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. think that also comes from the fact that we have so little understanding that when you see a tree, for example, that there is more about the tree than just the, the tree you see with your physical eyes. So when you look at, for example, when people come and they cut trees and things like that, and there is no understanding that there actually is a deeper meaning to it, it just, mm -hmm. it, it feels almost painful to watch the way they just chop it off mm -hmm. versus seeing there's something to it. So I wanna talk a little bit more about those those meanings, the stories we obviously f have forgotten, you know, in, in the Western world. Let's talk a little bit about some of those, because I know, I mean, Gerald, you mentioned, for example, grandmother moon. Why would you call the moon a grandmother? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I was taught, grandmother night sun. There's a reason why people get emotional when a full moon happens. The same reason why the tides come in are pulled when when the full moon is done. Because our connection to the grandmother, to even their own grandmothers in our own life, we go to them for guidance, for direction, for wisdom, for knowledge. And for us as a four directional people, there's four parts to us as a human being. The emotional being the emotion the creator gave us, the mental and our level of understanding and comprehension. The physical being uh, housing, our, we're all spiritual beings housing this human being. And the spiritual being, we all cry to a higher power in our time of trial and tribulation at mm -hmm. the same time when we give blessings, right? So, but for us, that's how we are connected to all of Creator's creation, the elements, the, the animal nation, all of that, because we are all part of, we're all the same because the four, that's why we all bleed the same as human beings. Our animals, what color is their blood? The same as ours, red. So, you know, it's those little things. And then that's what I said when I posted this, Nicola, he said, what the Western world has come to know as science is what we've always known mm -hmm. as spirituality, as four directional people. It's just that for us, we can never take ownership for this knowledge because it comes from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. But society, the Western world has taken our spirituality, labeled it science, all purely because from an egocentric mentality. The more that I know, the be the more that I know, the better than I am, is what the Western world mentality is. And we're not allowed to think that because this knowledge, this wisdom comes from the beginning of time. It's not ours to say it's ours. Yeah, I, I think that's a really, really important point. And I think that there, there's also something more to it because I think when you look back, it's not just the, 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 the science took the, the spirituality out of it. And, and yes, science has its purpose. Nobody is kind of saying that science doesn't have its purpose. Science mm -hmm. has its purpose. However, it, it, it kind of focused on something as, as a, a thing to look at, as a machine to look at. And it kind of took a lot of the connections, if you want, out of that. But I think that also goes a little deeper. I think that also when we look back, um, for example, even further back than the Middle Ages and things like that, at first people understood they were looking for God within, they were looking for spirituality within, they were looking for um, the, the, you know, for, they, they were part of nature, they would see nature. And then it started when we started having the church took its role, they kind of took God outside of the person and they placed it on a, on a, as a separate thing. So then you start looking externally instead of 
inwardly and then the whole process of, of disconnect started. I actually read a great book mm -hmm. on that, how this all happened and, and the origin of all of this. This was really, it's really amazing and I think it's really important for um, us to also remember that when we go back, why is that? Because now we're learning, I think more and more we're in a time where it seems that we're being asked to go more inside ourselves again and look more into ourselves. And also, when you think about last year, churches were closed, and don't get me wrong, churches are great, there's meaning, there's mm -hmm. faith, there's an expression. But we also learned, or kind of got to see that you can go to church inside yourself and find mm -hmm. the answers. And it seems to me that is a big disconnect, Gerald, that you talked about. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of really happened. So there's the science, mm -hmm. there's the spirituality that we took out of it. And so we don't really see it as a whole anymore. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it's exactly along what Gerald was saying is, those weren't separate parts of our, our world. Right. Those were right. parts of our everyday life. The, the science, what we call now science and spirituality was part of our everyday life. Right. Mm -hmm. no, no. It was a unison, and I think that's probably why mm -hmm. you see it as a whole. You see it in a holistic point of mm -hmm. view, which really yeah. comes when you think holistic as a holy, it comes from whole, from being you know, yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's a beautiful thing of my four directional ancestors and elders. I was teaching, when I was spent six years in the wilderness reconnecting with the ancestors, the land and the elders, I became a part of a program where I was teaching our four directional children that we were biologists, we were astrologists, we were doctors, we were geologists prior to European contact. Because we were taught through land-based teachings what that meant. When we talked about uh, the earth sciences that they teach in the Western curriculum, mm -hmm. that is the connection we have to to the to, to the star, to the constellations. When we talk about the mathematics that we have as in this world, there's seven stars in a Big Dipper, seven stars in a Little Dipper, that seven and seven is 14, that's our form of mathematics. Well, then comes down to the TP poles with the 14 TP poles, which is then connected, which is connected to the TP, which is then the social studies that they're taught. And mm -hmm. within the center of that whole fire is the uh, seven sacred teachings, which is then becomes the, the language arts of who, what they're being taught. And then the traditional games were taught as children so we could be able to live off the land as four directional people is a physical education that, they, that the world talks about. So we didn't, it's, we knew all this prior to European contact. We yeah. were just very, very misunderstood as, uh, as four directional people. When you say four directional people, clarify that for us, please, mm. Gerald. For me, when I say there's four parts to us as four directional people, the emotional, the mental, the physical, but mm -hmm. we also understand and honor that sacred number four, because mm -hmm. there's four seasons in the world, spring, mm -hmm. summer, fall, winter, and then there's the four sacred elements, earth, wind, water, fire. Yeah. And then there's the four times of the day, sunrise, sun, noon, sunset, midnight. There's the four races of the human family, the white race, the black race, the yellow race, mm -hmm. the red race. So it's under the four stages of life. This is when you're first born. This is when you're young. This is when you're middle age. This is when you're an elder. But at all stages in life, who is this odd one you can come to? That's the one we know as our creator. Right, so everything, numerology has its role in life to, to everything we know. Because creator created everything for a reason. There is nothing bad or of what the creator created. We, as a human being, mm -hmm. have taken upon ourselves to judge, condemn, and persecute creator's creation, including our fellow human being, because we have lost that connection with our higher power. We have lost that connection to creation. And that, so that's why this global shift in consciousness is happening right now. Snohomagos and Dhtumagos, they see it, the old people say. The Creator never sleeps, Spirit never sleeps. We always have to be mindful because there will come a time where we all go on a spirit journey back home to our higher power. But we become so arrogant as human beings because we operate from an egocentric mentality, we think we're going to live forever, even though we know. Yeah. There will come a time we will go home, right? 
And and even worse, I think that we we've witnessed this particularly that we think that we are better than nature and we need to perfect nature. I mean, look at what we've been doing to rivers. You know, there's a reason why rivers mm -hmm. have curves. What have we witnessed? Yeah. The moment when we actually degraded the when we when we made the river straight, you get more flooding. Yes, there is mm -hmm. a reason for that, but because that that connection was lost or has been missing, it's, it's just people do really things that are just unbelievable. And I think a lot of this comes from not understanding that we are part of nature, but not dominant of nature. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about some of the stories. So you mentioned, we talked a little bit about father-son at the beginning, and you mentioned that reflects the, 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 the spirit in the heart. Michael, is this how you got to know it as well, or do you, would you explain it differently? It's just slightly different. It, uh, mm -hmm. we, the, among the Haudenosaunee, I know my Seneca and Kyogo ways a little better because I grew up with them. Mm -hmm. But among the Haudenosaunee, we refer, refer to the son as our elder brother. Why as the elder mm -hmm. brother? I'm not sure why as the elder brother, but we have a respect for the, for the son and what it brings. Ah, okay. We look up to it through what it, it helps provide life. Without, without our elder brother, we wouldn't have I life. See. Yep. Mm -hmm. What about, so we have father, son, or elder brother. What about mother earth? Now you both call this, so in your, in your traditions, it's both called mother earth, right? Yes. Mm. Right, Gerald, for you as well? Yes, yes, <clears throat> same for us as well. Okay, interesting. So why is Mother Earth kind of universal, but Father Son has different names or different explanations? Mm -hmm. Is there a reason for it? I would think that it's because we get our life from, from the mm -hmm. Earth. So that's mm -hmm. more tangible for us. <clears throat> well, it's just, it, I mean, we get our life from our Earth and we also get our life from our mothers. So mm -hmm. I think that that's mm -hmm. where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about Grandmother Moon a little bit. Let's talk about Grandfather Rock. Why is mm -hmm. the rock a grandfather? For me, I, I was taught the Grandfather Rock is it's our oldest relative. It was here since the beginning of time. And the beautiful yeah. thing about being a human being is the six years in the wilderness, Joshua even shared with me and said the reason why the Creator created different colors, creeds, religions, and faith. Mm -hmm. is so we can understand one of the seven sacred laws of wisdom. Two parts of wisdom being, the first part being that to learn from your life experiences, both the good, the bad, and the ugly, but at the same time to learn from your fellow human being. And that is why for us as Four Directional we have multiple nations from uh, Four Directional people. Our mm -hmm. values, our beliefs, very just like our ceremonies, but our universal truth, our universal beliefs, our it's all about creator and it's about the and having that connection to Mother Earth and all of creation. Mm -hmm. But just like other cultures have different languages, different beliefs, because we're all meant to learn from each other as a human yes. being. So we can learn to live in balance, right? So Yes. Exactly. Let's let's talk for a moment about the four races. I know you mentioned that previously. Have you heard about that as well? Yes. Okay. So let's let's talk about the four races. How are they being described? Pick one. Start with one. <laughs> well, and, and with the Haudenosaunee, they, they, you know, they, they, they were the twins created the, the people, mm -hmm. and they they were put in an oven for, for certain different times, and that's why they have different colors. Mm -hmm. And when, and even after they created them, and it wasn't in their necessarily the color that they were, they still said, we've created you, I'm going to breathe life into you, and put them in another part of the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were in separate mm -hmm. areas of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, Gerald, you have a different definitions of the four mm -hmm. races. You want to share with us? For me, I was shown, shared by my, my elders, my ancestors, that the four races of the human family, each race was given a sacred responsibility to, to, to take care of those four elements. My white brothers and sisters were given the element of air. My African brothers and sisters were given the element of water. Uh, my yellow brothers and sisters were given the element of fire. And for us as the red people, we were given the element of earth. 
taking care of those elements. But we have lost that disconnection from those elements of those sacred roles and responsibilities. This is why the air is getting dirty. This is why things are falling from the sky. This is why the water is getting dirty. This is why Mother Earth is getting sick. And that because we are not honoring those sacred roles and responsibilities that we were given to be able to honor Mother Earth. Because when we stop, when we cease to honor those elements, mm. then we cease to honor our children and their children's children. Mm -hmm. We have a Cree proverb that says, only until the last tree has been cut down, only until the last fish has been caught, and only until the last river has been poisoned, only then will you realize that money can't be eaten. Yeah or you can't eat bricks either. When you think about mm -hmm. bricks and possessions and owning homes and things like that, you can't take a bite from a brick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, yeah. I wanna get back to one, one really beautiful thing that I think becomes so apparent from understanding the four races. And that is that um, the, the way you mentioned that is that every race kind of has responsibility also to an element. And that really shows the equality and the unity in all of the four races. And the absolute absurdity in terms of thinking that one race would dominate another. Mm -hmm. You see this differently? Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for me, it is. this is why the seven laws we were given to govern the four races, the human family, the seven sacred laws of love, humility, honesty, mm -hmm. courage, respect, wisdom, and truth. Those are seven laws that were given to us as a human family to govern our words and our actions. And that, but so that's kind of why everything was created for a reason, right? So, but again, because the, we have lost that connection with Ximantu, with the Creator, mm -hmm. then we are not honoring and understanding. And we have, in that disconnection from our higher power, we've also forgotten about our fellow human being. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why the world is living in chaos, going through confusion, mayhem, and destruction. Because this is why these laws were created that the Creator gave us these laws to govern our words uh, and our actions as well. But yeah, so it's a part of it. It's just, and it's just really opening your mind and your heart to understanding that, you know, this physical walk on this journey we call life is but a blip on the timeline of eternity. Mm -hmm. How do you choose to live? Because each day is a day closer to going home to Creator. And that's the beautiful thing of learning and understanding these teachings through the land, through the ancestors, through the elders, that we're here since the beginning of time. So now I'm able to live in balance with understanding that, you know what, there's gonna come a day I'll go home to my creator spirit world. But I'm gonna be able to, I want to be able to look back on my journey Zen and say, my hair will be all dis disarray, <laughs> battered and bruised. I can look back and say, you know what, I lived. That's the beautiful, it's simple. For me, creator's creation is, is understanding that creator's creation is simplicity in its finest. Mm. I love that idea of looking back and saying that one day you lived. And you mentioned something at the beginning that there are a lot of people at the end of our lives, and I think that happened to a lot of people. You may have witnessed that as well, that uh, you, you, there are people kind of all the shouldas and the wouldas come up and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I think in many cases, I've also seen other people who have lived their full lives and when it was time to go, they felt very happy about this. There was a contentment to it. There was a peace to it. There was just something that they could really say, yeah, I've, I've lived, mm -hmm. I've loved my life, and now mm -hmm. it's time to go. That seems to me, shouldn't that be the main thing than living our lives fully and being in unity and being responsible and, and being joined together like for, you know, for most of us? Yeah, I, I agree. You know, along the lines of what he was saying, living, living a life that the Creator could, would be proud of, that we'd be able to go to the Creator and say, this, this is our life and this, you know, this is, and go with a, with a good heart. Yeah. 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 
I, I, I just like there's a reason why well, like just <clears throat> the four races were given a sacred role and responsibility we are we are all born with a purpose and one of our purposes is to become who the creator created us to be and that's the beautiful thing of why i was told to walk away from the world i was living and go spend six years in the wilderness to reconnect to understand that because i was going down the wrong road of ego and i figured you know what i don't want to be that and my the creator that i know is so swift that he gave me a grandson to anchor me to be able to sit and listen to the silence and that's when my life changed when i was given my my grandson right so yeah, I, I totally get that. Let's let's talk a little bit more because I really love to hear those stories. So when you go out in nature and you see animals, obviously you probably have a, a, you attribute a certain quality or perhaps a certain meaning to it. What are the most common ones that are the most important for in in your tradition, for example, Michael? You want to share with us? Well, the, the turtle is a is an animal that among the Iroquois and some of the other tribes has a very big significance because we feel that the world is built on the back of a turtle. And mm -hmm. I've actually found out that the people in Bali have the same belief, that the world is built on the back of a turtle. Because <coughs> we, we came down, for the, uh, she came down from the sky world and they put her on the back of a, a sea turtle and the different animals dove down to try to get dirt and the little muskrat was the one that brought up some earth. Mm -hmm. And so for us, the world was built on the back of the turtle. Turtle is one of our clan animals. Clan animals? Yeah. Ah. A clan is like, it's a big extended family. We all believe we came from the same person. So with the Haudenosaunee, <coughs> all, of our, all of our clans are named after animals. Some of the other tribes have clans that are animals, but some of them also have clans that are maybe like, the uh, Seminoles have a wild potato because the wild potato is significant to them. A wild potato? Yeah. What's the wild potato about? It's a potato that is found in the wild and because it helps them sustain life. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So this mm -hmm. is about sustainability and how it sustains life. Yeah. I, I get that. So the turtle is important. What about you, Gerald? What are, what are some mm -hmm. of the important ones mm -hmm. in your tradition? Well, like my, my brother said, there was a, his name is a, the late Jacob Wawate had fasted for 14 days and 14 nights to be given knowledge from the beginning of time through the ancestors. And in the video, when you Google the story of Turtle Island, it'll come up. Mm -hmm. And in the story that Jacob, the late Jacob talks about, Grandmother Turtle is, the, is where North, the, the Americas, North America sits on Grandmother, on Grandmother Turtle. Well, and then you'll see in the video, he talks about where Russia Asia, Europe, that part of the world is actually in a form of the other oldest living mammal in this world, which is that of the elephant. So we have grandmother turtle here in North America and Asia, Europe and Russia and that part of the world, actually he draws it out that mm -hmm. these are two of the oldest living mammals in creation. And Turtle Island is the grandmother the elephant is the male because for us everything is all about balance what goes up must come down where there's male there's female when it comes to element to the elements to the animals to us as a human being as well right so it's all about balance for us so and for us the eagle is one of the most sacred in the winged kingdom and that as is and these animals all have a role as well as sacred role and that but we as human beings have become so arrogant and thinking that we're above these animals part of our creation story talks about that these animals asked to to be to help to help sustain us as a Family, right? Let's so. talk about the sacred roles here for a little bit. So, for example, the eagle. What is the sacred role of the eagle? Any one of you wants to take that one? The eagle's like the, the bird that flies the highest. So mm -hmm. we believe that it takes... And the eagle can look into the sun, right? The mm -hmm. eagle, I think, is mm -hmm. the only bird that can mm -hmm. actually look directly in the sun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it takes our, our, our thoughts and prayers up to the Creator along with yeah. the smoke. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
for uh, the same thing with what my brother said for me i was taught that the eagle is the one that flies closest to the creator mm -hmm. and as human beings when we walk during the day we pick up impurities from from creation mm -hmm. and then when we offer our prayers then the cure the eagle will purify our prayer that they take that the eagle takes it up to our creator right so mm -hmm. and that so that's a part of it and we we are taught that they have a role and responsibility of why they were here. Mm -hmm. they, they're messengers and they bring medicine and they bring teachings to us as well. And they're not just animals. They yeah. are our relations, right? So Yeah. What, what about the buffalo? Buffalo wasn't really strong in our culture. Okay. I mean, the, they did have an Eastern bison in, in among the Cherokees, and, mm -hmm. but I don't, like I said, I grew up on the Haudenosaunee side, so I don't know as much about my Cherokee ancestry mm -hmm. and history. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, the buffalo provided, and any of the animals actually, we, tried, we used as much of it as we could, you know. We would make yeah. implements out of the horns and the, and the bones, yeah. and clothing and dance items. When I danced, I danced as a traditional Iroquois because I, I grew up in, in that society. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have deer toes on, on my on my knees instead of rattles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, oh, and one of my ra one of the rattles I have is made out of deer toes. Yeah, and and yeah. so they've used the entire animal and not just part of it, yeah. and certainly yeah. never just yeah. killed one because you kill mm -hmm. one. Although I say this is bad practice because I grew up in the hunter household, and the first thing I learned from my from my father and stepfather was. You only take what you, 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 first of all, you only kill when you need the meat. And then you, you be very responsible about this. You, you don't just, you know, be trigger nervous and, and shoot something just to shoot mm -hmm. something, but there is a reason for it. And you use mm -hmm. the entire yeah. creation and you honor yeah. the animal before you, 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 you know, you, you um, basically use all those pieces of Right, you, you give thanks for it, yeah. giving, giving its life right. to so that you, yeah. can, you right. can live. Right. Yeah, for my understanding of the <laughs> buffalo is, it, we got everything from the buffalo. Unfortunately, that is why when they said, kill the buffalo, kill the Indian. Because the buffalo gave us our food, gave us our shelter, gave us mm. our clothing, gave us what, everything we needed to, to be able to, to exist and live off Mother Earth, and yeah. that and that was part of it. It's that's unfortunately is what history has shown us, and that so. And for us here in Canada, we have the we have the the moose is a part of it. Is that we have all these animals who have a role, and that and we honor them for when they give their life mm. for for us to sustain ourselves. Yeah. You know, so. But, but beyond that, I want to talk a little bit also about beyond that, because you, you also speak of, of animals. There, there's a spiritual component to it. So we often talk about the spirit animal, because there are some qualities when an animal comes to your life, so to speak, there are some qualities that you can learn from the animal, because the animal has certain qualities. Are there some that you can mention, for example, what we can learn from? Well, with the uh, Haudenosaunee, like I said, all, all of theirs are animals. All of our clans are animals. <clears throat> but they're because they taught us something. Mm -hmm. Like the, the deer taught them how to run long, long distances. Mm -hmm. and so it's long, okay. Our messaging system, they could travel, get a message from like Albany to like Buffalo in a matter of a couple of days from runners. The runners, mm -hmm. they had a specific purpose. They would, their mm -hmm. purpose was to memorize <clears throat> the stories, mm -hmm. and they would run to the next runner. <clears throat> they usually had a, a, a string of beads, mm -hmm. wampum, that, and they would tell, tell the story through the, through the beads, and the other person would repeat it back, and when they got it complete, mm -hmm. they would then run it to the next runner. So they could cover great distances mm -hmm. with these running systems that they had. That's a great example. So you learn exactly, that's what I meant. So you learn the qualities from, from an animal, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think if we actually started meditating about this, when you see an animal, first of all, you can pick up its energy. And then the other thing is that we can really learn a lot from the qualities. Mm -hmm. And maybe then we see that that's also a quality that's inherent in us. Like, for example, when you just mentioned the, the long distance runners, they look at the deers and things like that. 
-hmm. Is that something that then inspired them to also the people to kind of think of themselves like having more uh, condition, for example, having more stamina, for example, things like that? Yeah, it, it, would, it would help with that. It would give them that, that mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gerald, you got one that you'd <clears throat> like to share? No, it's just, it's funny how the world will look at a crow as <laughs> a scavenger, as something that's not yes. good. But when you, for us, I was told, I was taught was that when you see a murder of crows, they are there to pick up all the negativity, including the energy we've left behind as human beings. They're there to come clean it up and to clean the mess that we have left behind. And uh, but it's so that's how disconnected the world has become. And uh, they're yeah. even labeling these animals who actually are just fulfilling their role and responsibility. We talk about the wolf. The wolf mm -hmm. can be is a leader, but also can lead a pack, but also can walk alone some of the characteristics and the attributes that a wolf has. Mm -hmm. And that so there, because these are why we were given that that connection to to the animals, to the elements, because each, even the fire, the water, there's teachings behind everything that mm -hmm. has been created. And, that, and that's the beautiful thing about why I'm so honored to have, there's a generation of us mm -hmm. who are going back to understanding our language and understanding our spirituality but at the same time going back and getting balancing that with education right because everything was created for a reason like from right from money to uh, to religion to faith or academia it all has a role and responsibility at the same time but mm -hmm. it's how we choose to honor what it is that the creator created if we honor to make it to make ourselves a better human being to make the world a better place then we're honoring it for what it is but if we do it just for ourselves and nobody else, then we're not honoring what it was created for, right? So. Yeah. Now, you mentioned in, in our conversation previously to the show, you talked about we are the land. And I know we talked about this. We talked about the four directions. We talked about the four elements and things like that. How we have about six minutes left. Yeah. How oh, wow. would we remember and how would it help us to reconnect with that very mm -hmm. thought that we are the land so if you mm -hmm. if you could give us some advice or some guidance mm -hmm. on that yeah. what would that be how can we reconnect so we get yeah. to that point and understanding yeah. that yeah. we are the land and we feel it we think about it like this we we embrace it we treat it mm -hmm. like we are the mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. not we own the land we are no. the land no. well for me it was actually a welsh brother who walked away from the Western world and, and we adopted him into our, into our sacred circle of elders and healers. And, and he came and spent six years out on the land to understand. And he walked away having a deeper appreciation for, the, for Mother Earth, for the elements and for life itself. Mm -hmm. Because he was the one who said to me, we are the land, the air we breathe, the, the water, the, the DNA, the trees, all of that, he, he said, said, we are the land. So, and for him, it, he, I can say, I always tell him, you speak on behalf of your Western brothers and sisters because you now know after spending those six years and understanding these land-based teachings and sitting with, the, with our elders and our knowledge keepers, you have a deeper appreciation than he does now, right? So... So that's a part of how, that's what he taught me was that it is possible for mm -hmm. my fellow human being to understand that how we are all truly connected to all of Creator's creation. Hmm. What about you, Michael? Yeah, I mean, there's people all over the world that you know live, live on the land and we really are the land because the land provides all the food that we eat. Even, even if it's an animal, the animal got its food from the land. So we are in all one big cycle and mm -hmm. anything that we do affects other parts of the cycle and we have to keep that in mind when we take care of stuff. Mm -hmm. So going forward, when you look at what's happening to the environment, when you look at what's happening to our to you know our 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 living conditions, when you look at what's happening to the loss of, of biodiversity, when you look at what's happening and really what we do to the planet, where do you see the biggest learning potential for us going forward right now? I would say that the, the youth that is coming up is our, is our biggest learning potential. 
you know, if, if we can train them in these thoughts and, ha and ways and to view the world in, in a different way, that, then we, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a chance. But that means they would need to hear those stories more and they would learn to actually learn from the land and from nature to get all those, those, uh, these, these understandings that then enables them to kind of go within and learn, right? Well, some of them are already getting that, like, uh, like Rita Thunberg and mm -hmm. know, other native youth are, are really like leading a lot of the environmental stuff. Mm -hmm. So what we need, what we as older people mm -hmm. need to do, learn is to listen to these people mm -hmm. And they're not kids, they're young adults. They have knowledge that we may have forgotten. They may have mm -hmm. picked up things that we didn't pick up at that point in time because our mind was in a different point. So they, are, they have something yeah. important to offer us and we need to listen to it mm -hmm. and hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Gerald? And only, only when you can answer to yourself, when you ask yourself, why do I have a deja vu? Why do I have dreams? Why is there a Big Dipper and a Little Dipper in the night sky? Only when you can answer that, then you will really understand that you'll be able to look back on your journey's end and say, yeah, I lived. Then you'll understand that spirit, uh, everything has a spirit. Just because it's inanimate does not mean it does not have a spirit. A rock can be hot, a rock can be cold. It's still energy based, right? And yeah. it's just simple little things. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Okay, so why do we have a Big Dipper? For us, we are, that's our connection to our ancestors from the stars. And those constellations is how we were able to, to travel on the back of Mother Earth and understand really that there's more to life than meets. Yes, there's over 100 billion stars in our yeah. universe. And there's multiple universes. So if you think that we're the only ones who exist in this universe or multiple <laughs> universes then yeah i think i would give my give my give my head a shake so yeah that would be pretty lonely okay <laughs> what's your final word that you would like our audience to take from this conversation tonight to respect mother earth and realize that we are a part of it uh -huh. and everything we do has an effect on it oh i love that what about you gerald when you can learn to respect yourself and love yourself and then you'll come to understand that the creator exists for a reason and all of creator creation was created for a reason and just open your mind and your heart and mm -hmm. learn to live in balance and harmony. So the balance and harmony, but that then also would mean that we kind of figure out, we need to reconnect with the planet to figure out a little bit more about our own purpose and what's life on earth all about. Because I'm sure most people at this point have probably realized it's more than just, um, you know, doing something in order to do, so to speak, right? Thank you so much. It was an absolute honor to have you both on. Thank you so much for all the stories you shared. And please keep doing that because there is a lot we need to learn about this and hear about that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope we've inspired you a little bit to look beyond. And next time you see a bird or a butterfly, maybe you wonder why does it exist and why is it out there and what it means for you, how it relates. Thank you so much. We see you next week. Have a good night.